Hi everyone, I'm so excited to welcome you to today's video. This video is all about creative spaces, whether it's a small corner in a tiny apartment or a dreamy, fully equipped studio. We all need a place to paint. Today I'll be sharing a glimpse into my studio, but more importantly, I want you to have a look at the unique and diverse painting spaces of some of my amazing patrons. I asked some of them to share their painting spaces and they sent me some videos. Before we look at them, I want to get this message across. You don't need a studio to work in. You just need a little bit of space. When I first started working full time as an artist, Dom and I lived in Sydney in a tiny little two bedroom apartment. I had this really small space in the corner of the apartment where I worked. It was no more than two meters by two meters. It was cramped and there was nowhere to put anything, but I had an art table, a chair and a light, and that was all I needed to work. The space was so small that sometimes I moved my work out onto the tiny little dining table that we had in the kitchen, and I worked there while Dom was at work. He's a longer shot of that space. That meant I had to clean everything off at the end of the day so that we could have somewhere to sit and eat our dinner. I did that for four years and then we moved back home here in the house here. We have a large office upstairs and I had my painting table in a little alcove in that room. That's where I used to film the YouTube videos when I first started. Still not a lot of space, but I managed. The work I did in those spaces set us up so that we could build this studio and now I can spread out. All right, let's explore some of my patrons painting spaces together and hopefully they'll give you some ideas for your own painting space. To begin, I will show you my studio when I first moved in here. At the end of the video, I'll show you what it looks like now when I'm actually working in it. This is the little kitchenette where I can make myself a cup of tea and I also stretch my watercolor paper in that sink that's there. This is the cupboard where I keep all the lights and camera equipment. This is the little bathroom with a shower that I don't use. These are the built-in cupboards where I store all the art supplies. And that's the area where my computer is where I do all the voiceover and video editing. And then in the corner of the studio, I've got my plan cabinet where I store all my watercolor paper and some paintings. Okay, let's have a look at some of my patrons painting spaces now. This is Tracy's room. She has set her painting room up in a spare bedroom of her house. This is one of the areas where she paints. This desk sits right in front of the window. She's got her water, paints and brushes set out ready to use and she's got more brushes in a drawer that she can grab quickly if she needs them when she's painting. Every time she gets a new tube of paint she swatches it and keeps it in this folder and the colours that she uses most often are displayed on the desk. To the left of this painting desk is a work table where Tracy can cut and store her paper. She uses a light box here to transfer her drawing to the watercolour paper. She said she bought this light box on Amazon and she's really happy with the way it works. On the other wall of the room, she has another work table that she calls her raised work area. So here she can stand to work if she wants to. This little platform where the paper is sitting was homemade and it fits a full sheet of watercolour paper. So if she's working on a large painting, she can easily reach all corners of the painting when she stands up. These little packages here are concrete pavers that she's wrapped in brown paper and she uses them as weights to flatten her paper. They're about six kilos in weight, each of them. So that's a look at Tracy's painting space. This painting space is Kate's. This space is eight square meters and it's got everything Kate needs to be creative. She has a desk in front of a large window that gives her a lot of natural light. She uses a toothbrush stand to hold all of her brushes, some pencils and other tools that she needs. Everything she needs to work with is on this table. 
This table has got trestle legs, which allows her to store excess paper, travel pallets and art books. Beside her work table is this large storage cabinet where she stores a lot of her art supplies. This was once a cabinet in a local cosmetic store. On the other side of her painting table is a sofa where her dog Coco keeps a watchful eye on her when she works. This painting room is Kimberly's. Kimberly has an L-shaped desk in her painting space. Underneath the desk are a few sets of drawers where she stores some of her art supplies. She stores the larger sheets of paper in the white cupboard beside the desk. There's a nice shelving unit at the back of the desk that holds her pencils and some brushes and other things. She's also got her computer there where she can watch online watercolour classes while she paints. This room here is Nancy's painting room. This painting room is also a guest bedroom. So Nancy has a Murphy bed that she can open up and use when she has visitors staying overnight. Nancy's desk is adjustable, so she can raise it higher if she wants to paint standing up, and she can also put the top of the table on an angle. A lot of her storage cupboards are from Ikea, and I love this cabinet where she stores her paper. I also love this little water and brush holder on her desk. She can clean her brushes really well, and then she can hang them to dry around the outside edge. The desk has got a built-in holder where she keeps her pens and pencils. And there's an area that holds some brushes, water jars and her water spray. Nancy likes to keep her drawers organised so she can find things easily. Her paints are sorted into colour categories. All her watercolour pads are in one drawer. In another drawer, she's got a paper cutter. She's got some gel pens, some pencils, and she's even got a plastic container full of salt that she can use to add texture to her paintings. This is Anne's painting room. Anne, like the others, has a room dedicated to her art. There's a big bookshelf where she stores her art supplies in categories. Look how neat everything is. This shelf here is everything to do with working with pencils. She has her paper on another shelf. Down here she keeps some frames. And this shelf here is where she keeps all the supplies she needs for oil painting. And above that is everything she needs for painting in acrylic. All of which she doesn't use much anymore because she now paints in watercolour. This is the table where she does her watercolour paintings. Behind her painting table is where she keeps all her watercolour supplies. She has some paper stored here and some paintings that she's done. She's got some of them framed on the wall as well. This room here is Susie's. And she's had this room for about two years, but before that she didn't have a dedicated space to paint in. In this room there are two large windows and two large tables. There's a large drawer unit where she keeps some of her art supplies, and there's a small shelf unit that holds her brushes and other things. With the two tables side by side she has plenty of room to paint. Susie has everything organised here and in easy reach when she's working. And the toilet paper is for wiping her brushes on. On the right there you can see where she stores some of her paintings. She's got another shelf unit there with supplies and brushes and things on it. And there's two more large cupboards where she stores art supplies. It's an easel. And then right behind where she paints she's got this great big colour chart that she refers to when she's painting. In one of those cupboards, she has stored all of her watercolour paper. She's got it all labelled and she's even got some of those silica gel sachets that absorb moisture. And in this cupboard, she's got a lot more supplies, more paper. She's got some DVDs down in that box, palettes, paints, 
my goodness, she's got more room than I have. Towels. And then there's another shelf up here. It's full of more supplies. All beautifully organized. There's so many supplies here. All the gator boards there. With paper ready and prepared for her. Lots of mediums. Big crates to store everything in and everything is really well organized. And here she's about to start the brushing jar tutorial. This is Star's painting area. She lives in an apartment with limited space. So she set up her painting table next to some built-in shelving so that she has space to store her art supplies. She keeps her brushes and other tools in some Japanese porcelain and pottery. Her palette sits off the edge of the desk to give her some more room on top of the table, but she has secured it in place with some hot glue. On this little side table that she has here, there's a heat gun to dry her work and some small ceramic palettes. And she found these at a thrift store. On her table, she has an old towel that sits on top of some anti-slip rug underlay. To raise her paper off the table, she uses a pool noodle that's also wrapped in the anti-slip underlay. She has a tablet on the table for photo references and online tutorials. Some soap dishes she uses as some paintbrush wrists. And she's also got this large lamp that she loves because it gives her ample light over her work area. She needs that because she doesn't have any natural light in this area. Even though Star's space is small, she's got it really well organised. Okay, now we can have a look at my studio as it looks when I'm actually working in it. These are the cupboards where I store all my art supplies. And this is my big work desk. Got plenty of room to spread out and you can see that it gets in a bit of a mess when I'm working. I was trying out some Jackson's paintbrushes for the first time when I painted this little rose. And this is from the other side of the room looking across the desk. My computer sits at the other end of the room where I do editing, voicing over and other work that I need to do for my business. I've got my little Buddha friend right in front of me when I work just to remind me to be mindful and relax and not stress. And this is my bookshelf where I keep a lot of my books and some paper for the printer and things like that. So it gets in a mess when I'm working, but I like to tidy it up between paintings. I need to have a clean studio when I start a new painting. It helps me to get into the right headspace. Thank you to my patrons for sharing their spaces. I really appreciate it. If you'd like to become a patron of mine, please join us on Patreon. Or if you don't like subscriptions, you can now purchase individual watercolor classes of mine and have lifetime access to them. Dom's been busy adding them to our website. I've put a link in the video for you to find out more about them. And one more thing. What are you waiting for? I've got these t-shirts available in the shop as well. I hope these painting spaces give you some ideas of your own. You don't need a lot of space to be creative, but it helps if you're organized. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. I want to, do you want me to start all over again? Mm. All over again from today? Beautiful. It was cramped. And there was none of the day so that we could have somewhere to sit and eat our dinner. She's got, she's just...